Fires rage in the Amazon rainforest. Some of them were set by ranchers. So is meat to blame? And what impact is meat really having on our environment? This is America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. The Amazon is burning. The Amazon basin is burning at a record rate, according to Brazil's research center. More than 72,000 fires have scorched the country this year, an over 80% increase compared to the same period in 2018. Flames destroying one and a half football fields of rainforest every minute of every day. And who's to blame for these fires? According to CNN, it's people who eat too much meat. Steve. Not just according to CNN, actually. In recent years, that's become a common headline in the media. According to the Yale School of Forestry, cattle ranching is the largest driver of deforestation in every Amazon country, accounting for 80% of current deforestation rates. And Brazil, which contains 60% of the Amazon, is the world's largest exporter of beef. Cattle ranchers in the Brazilian Amazon are aggressively expanding their herds and willing to clear cut the forest and burn what's left to make way for pastures. As headlines would suggest, this is why people who eat meat are ultimately responsible for the Amazon fires. And if the Amazon burns, we all do. Often called the lungs of the earth, the rainforest supplies 20% of the world's oxygen. If it burns to a point of no return, environmentalists warn it could turn into a dry savanna and begin emitting carbon instead, plunging the planet ever deeper into a climate change crisis. But it's not just the Amazon. According to the United Nations, every bite of burger boosts harmful greenhouse gases. According to this study in the journal Science, meat, aquaculture, eggs, and dairy use approximately 83% of the world's farmland. And those animals are eating up food that could be used to feed people. It cites this report. WWF, Appetite for Destruction. Oh, sorry, I misread that. It's called WWF, Appetite for Destruction. I always forget it stands for the World Wildlife Fund now. Stupid panda. Anyway, the report says the more animal products we eat, the more feed we need to produce. So then it predicts the impact on climate change. Huge reductions in meat eating are essential to avoid dangerous climate change, according to the most comprehensive analysis yet of the food system's impact on the environment. In Western countries, beef consumption needs to fall by 90% and be replaced by five times more beans and pulses. That sounds really extreme. I mean, cutting beef consumption by 90% would be pretty hard to deal with. But everyone in the office eating five times as many beans? That would be a serious environmental problem. According to this 2006 report by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the livestock sector is responsible for 18% of all greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than the transportation sector. And while that may sound like a huge and possibly made up number, three years later, this 2009 analysis by World Watch Institute said meat creates not 18, but 51% of all greenhouse gas emissions. I mean, meat is causing more than half of all greenhouse gas emissions. I feel like maybe we should look into that statistic. But you know what? There's no time to look into it. Because according to the UN, we have only 12 years left to prevent a climate change catastrophe. So obviously, we need a solution, and we need it fast. What do you eat, and what does it cost you? The planet. Your children's future. But if we all went vegan tomorrow, we would cut greenhouse gas emissions by 25%. Of course, the answer is veganism. Meat is destroying the planet, so we all need to stop eating meat. Which is why from now on, I'm only eating KFC vegan fried chicken. Good for you and the environment. Yes, that is real. From the same company that just nine years ago introduced the KFC Double Down Sandwich, made with cheese and bacon between two chunks of fried chicken. It may have been bad for the environment, but it absolutely destroyed afternoon productivity. Anyway, according to one researcher at Oxford University, a vegan diet is probably the single biggest way to reduce your impact on planet Earth. And not just greenhouse gas emissions, but in many different ways. Okay, so let's put all this together. The only way to save the Amazon, and the planet, 
and our children's future is to stop eating meat and go vegan. The use of animals for food is the biggest environmental problem. Forget about power plants. That's not even close. There is absolutely no scenario for preventing catastrophic climate change without a vast reduction in the scale of animal agriculture. That was Pat Brown, CEO and founder of Impossible Foods, a fake meat company. I mean, they're a real company that makes fake meat. Impossible Foods, along with another fake meat company, Beyond Meat, were the winners of the 2018 United Nations Champions of the Earth Award. I'm guessing both companies have the same motto, buy our product or the earth will die. But how are we going to stop people from eating meat? As The Economist points out, more poor people are eating meat around the world. That means they will live longer, healthier lives, but it is bad news for the environment. Yeah, these no good poor people becoming less poor and eating better food, they're going to be the death of us all. Don't worry. There are ways to fix this problem. The former executive secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change suggested, how about restaurants in 10 to 15 years start treating carnivores the same way that smokers are treated? If they want to eat meat, they can do it outside the restaurant. Boy, that sure sounds good. Protect people from the dangers of secondhand meat, which somehow sounds way more disgusting than secondhand smoke. But we need solutions now, not 10 to 15 years from now. Remember, we only have 12 years left. Well, the United Nations has suggested a tax on meat. That's a great idea. I mean, it won't stop middle-class Americans like me from eating meat. We can still afford it. But it will definitely stop a lot of those poor African children. Researchers interviewed by The Guardian suggest a mix of education, taxes, subsidies for plant-based foods, and changes to school and workplace menus. Also, excellent ideas. Teach children from a young age that meat is bad and that anyone who eats meat is a horrible person destroying the planet. Because if we want to save the planet, even small increases in the consumption of red meat or dairy foods would make this goal difficult or impossible to achieve. That's according to 30 scientists behind this report in the British medical journal The Lancet. And this report actually has a plan of action. They call it the Great Food Transformation. It outlines strategies that range from the least active, simply sharing information, to the most aggressive, eliminating consumer choice. Yes, the people have too much freedom to eat meat. If only the government could get involved to save us from ourselves. But before we lose our minds over the impending doom of too much meat, maybe we should look a little more closely at the data. Let's go back to the Amazon. Yes, it's still on fire. But if all 320 million people in the U.S. went vegan, it would actually have very little effect on cattle ranching in Brazil. The biggest importers of Brazilian beef are Hong Kong and China. The U.S. only makes up 2%. Okay, so maybe this one isn't America's fault. I know that's hard for some people to imagine. But surely the fire is still the result of meat consumption and climate change in general, right? I mean, as this graph from Vice shows, Fires in the Amazon this year are at a record high. Except if you look back over the past 20 years, the fires are actually slightly below average. And actually, annual deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon is down significantly overall compared to 20 or 30 years ago. And the fires might have very little to do with global warming. According to the New York Times, the farmers are setting the fires, and not in old growth rainforest, but land that's already been cleared for agriculture. And it might not even have anything to do with beef. The increase in fires every August to October coincides with the season when farmers begin planting soybean and corn. Soybean and corn. Both ingredients in things like KFC vegan fried chicken. In fact, there are actually more fires burning right now in the African countries of Angola and the DR Congo than in the Amazon. And those aren't global centers for cattle ranching. Their cash crops actually support a more plant-based diet. Okay, so maybe meat isn't the driving force behind the recent fires in the Amazon. But meat is still bad for the environment, right? I mean, that's what the CEO of Beyond Meat says. The statistic that really comes to mind for me is this 80% of agricultural land in the United States being devoted either through grazing or through growing feed to feeding animals that are then slaughtered and converted okay. into meat. That's a lot of land that could be used to grow food for humans instead, right? 
Maybe not. As much as 70% of all agricultural land globally is rangeland that can only be utilized as grazing land for ruminant livestock. Basically, that's land that can't be used to grow crops. In addition to grazing on land that can't grow other foods, according to this study, 86% of what livestock eat is inedible for humans. That's because they're mainly eating the byproducts of other agricultural production. The stalks and leaves left after corn harvest, for example. In fact, if not consumed by livestock, the study points out these leftovers could quickly become an environmental burden. So meat might not be behind the Amazon fires or taking up food and land that could be used for other purposes. But greenhouse gases, climate change. Remember, we only have 12 years left to limit climate change catastrophe. But here's the thing about greenhouse gas emissions from livestock. There are some very confusing statistics out there. I mentioned one earlier that said meat is responsible for 51% of all greenhouse gas emissions. But even if we look at the FAO's lower number, that meat is responsible for 18%, that's still supposedly more than from transportation. However, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, transportation makes up 29% of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions, and agriculture was only 9%, and animal agriculture is less than half of that, or 4% of the total. So in other words, we've heard that meat contributed to 18%, then 51%, and now just 4% of greenhouse gas emissions. Those are some very different numbers. The problem is, the FAO, which came up with the 18% number, got its numbers by looking at all the ways livestock might produce greenhouse gases. That includes everything from emissions from fertilizer production, to growing feed, to cow burps. Yes, cow burps. They did not do that for transportation. Instead of looking at the emissions from manufacturing all the parts of a car or maintaining all the roads, bridges, and airports, they only looked at the exhaust from finished cars, trucks, trains, and planes. So it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges, or apples and beef. As for the 51% number, the researchers who wrote that paper felt that the FAO had underestimated how much livestock there was in the world by more than half that scientists underestimated how much methane that livestock produced, and said that CO2 emissions from livestock breathing should count. So they recalculated all that to get a much higher number, and used that to convince people we need to take extreme action. And the media just ate it up. But let's say we use the EPA's numbers. If everyone in the U.S. went vegan, and all animal agriculture disappeared, we'd reduce U.S. greenhouse gas emissions 2.6%, which is 0.36% of global emissions. So, maybe not a huge benefit to the planet. But you know who would benefit? Companies like Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods. A Bank of America analysis found the average retail price for Beyond Meat burgers is $12 per pound, compared to $4 per pound for regular beef patties. A lot of meat alternatives on the market are made with things like mushrooms, beans, soy, and palm oil. Not only are those things cheap, soy and palm oil are also major contributing factors to deforestation. Meanwhile, beef consumption per capita in the U.S. is actually down. In fact, since the 1970s, the United States has largely been transitioning to a more plant-based diet. Grain, fat, and oil consumption is way up. And that's not animal fat either. It's mostly vegetable oil. This is also around the same time as a surge in obesity. So, is a plant-based diet healthier than meat? That would be a topic for another episode. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. But at any rate, it seems like many of the statistics suggesting meat is the main cause of environmental disaster are leaving out some complex issues. But if veganism isn't the answer, what is? What we do know is a problem, is that soil around the world has been depleted of its nutrients, making it harder to grow crops. And a big cause of this is the use of monocultures. That's when you grow a single crop on a piece of land. In the U.S., that's mainly corn. Corn uses more land than any other crop. And the majority of it doesn't go to feed people. It's turned into biofuels, like ethanol, and high-fructose corn syrup, which, like ethanol, we probably shouldn't be eating. 
Monocultures and the chemical fertilizers and pesticides required to grow them end up depleting the soil. And according to Scientific American, given enough time, most massive monocultures fail, often spectacularly. The solution? We need more livestock, not less. In order to reverse the problems that have arisen from chemical-dependent crop monocultures, grass and livestock are having to be reintroduced as part of mixed arable systems. So crops need to be diversified. And also, livestock, like cows, need to eat the grass and turn that into fertilizer that enriches the soil. In other words, livestock, or as I call them, meat machines, are part of the natural cycle that keeps the environment healthy. Now, I'm not saying we all have to eat meat, but I am saying it may not be that helpful for everyone to go vegan. But do lay off the corn syrup. Thanks for watching this episode of America Uncovered. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And remember, YouTube is demonetizing our channel, so we rely on your support on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Check it out. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.